Jyoti Sharma. So Jyoti is a manager in a technology architecture and a planning team at Verizon. Um, in this role, Jyoti is responsible for defining architecture and strategy for Verizon's network, um, network enterprise and consumer production services. Um, Jyoti has uh, more than 20 years of industry experience in technology and telecommunication roles, uh, including wireless systems, engineering and systems performance. Um, Jyoti currently serves as the Chair of Women in Engineering at the IEEE New Jersey section. Um, we are very pleased to have you here, Jyoti, and thanks for joining us today. Um, having said that, uh, please go ahead and present on this very interesting topic, which is uh, edge computing and 5G. Thank you, Lakshmi. Um, thanks to ASEI as well for having me here. And thank you, Piyush. Uh, for many of you who don't know, Piyush and I were classmates when we were your age. So it's a real true privilege to be here. And after listening to all of you, I think this was the best way to celebrate India's Independence Day uh, with all of you. And listening to all your presentation, I'm really honored to be in your presence. And our future looks really bright. Um, and I am part of Women in Engineering. So another uh, great thing was to see so many girls presenting their research. And I, I am... Uh, Really, really thrilled to see that. Um, so I've been um, working in the wireless industry since my master's, which I started uh, way back when, and uh, in the Asian Institute of Technology uh, after I graduated from Delhi. And then I did my PhD in the area uh, from the IIT Delhi. Um, and I've seen this wireless industry grow uh, from the time from 1G to all the way to 5G. So I can share some background with all of you uh, the work that you're all doing, it's, it's going to have a huge impact and technology is going to play a huge impact. But what's really nice, nice to see is that you're also thinking of the society. You're not just technologists or engineers, but you are really thinking beyond on how to make an impact on the world. And I think that's what a technologist should be. I think I realized it much later in my career, how to impact the society by joining Women in Engineering, IEEE, or by joining other organizations and mentoring other students like you, um, Paul, giving internships to students like you. But I, I share with you with 2G, your, your parents might tell you, it was mostly text messaging and it was just voice, which are my, your students of your generation or kids of your generation can't even imagine. There were no applications, a large size, big wireless phones, which weighed some three, four pounds. And then we moved to 3G when you were probably, you know, toddlers or just growing up um, when we started getting some data and applications. And now you're creating applications that will change the world. It's all with that wireless technology that we have. And you guys are really building on top of it. So it's very encouraging to see how you're using technology to advance and solve problems for many um, underserved or underrepresented communities. I, I've seen some presentations about how you're helping people who have uh, blindness or you're helping using AI machine learning to detect medicines or to detect a strawberry going bad. Um, so it's you're really applying it and how to scale it as well as making it cost effective. So you are true entrepreneurs using technology today. With 4G, we saw high speeds, high bandwidth. And now with 5G, we're going to see transformative experiences with many IoT devices and high bandwidth. I think there was one presentation on ultra wide band. So if we move on to the next slide, 5G relies heavily on ultra wide band. That's the spectrum that 5G uses to provide you ultra high speed throughput and ultra low latency, um, very high reliability as well as mobility and connected devices. So there was one presentation on the drones. Imagine millions and millions of IoT and connected devices on the network, and now you can use, connect those drones, whether it's for delivering packages or for monitoring using computer vision, monitoring some of the strawberry fields or other fields. I was thinking of you know, food going by, bad in refrigerators, and how do we use this computer vision and other technologies that you are developing to reduce the food uh, from going waste uh, by uh, doing some kind of computer vision and intelligence, uh, AI and ML algorithms in that. So your uh, inventions have far reaching impact and I was glued to my seat. I couldn't move because I was so 
uh, impressed by your all your presentations. Moving on to the next slide, uh, these are the 5G currencies, but I said 5G, how does it deliver really high, high throughput and high speed so that you can download your favorite movie in seconds rather than minutes? You don't have to wait for that thing to keep going around. It's through the ultra wideband millimeter wave and that spectrum is key to delivering that high speed. There are also dense deployment in cities and new radio technology that the standards have developed. And there are many more technical enablers, but it's not just a new technology that delivers you high speed, but it offers so many new things like low latency. So you're all used to playing games on the computer and there's cloud gaming, um, but there is always some delay when you're doing cloud gaming. With 5G, you'll see those latencies going down in tens of milliseconds. And there are other technologies that help, uh, which are precise positioning. So I heard there was a talk about really doing centimeter level positioning. We work on technologies for connected and autonomous vehicles that provide RTK technologies, which is real-time kinetics, to really do that centimeter level positioning. So it was interesting to see another point of view on how to achieve that high accuracy positioning to deliver certain things on the, on the ground using drones. I think all the presentations really leverage the current technologies, which is very impressive. Uh, going on to the next slide. So these are the building blocks of 5G. And I want to also touch upon edge computing, which would be so key in providing transformative experiences for real-time enterprise applications, which really allows to reduce the round-trip delay, or what we call latency, by moving the cloud computing and so the compute resources closer to the edge of the 5G network. So you don't have to go through the internet and come back, and the end-to-end round-trip delay would be much more reduced. Um, and it will be in the order of some less than 20 milliseconds or even lesser. So with Ver in Verizon, we recently announced two locations, Chicago and in the Bay Area, closer to a few where you can really innovate using that technology to have any low latency applications that require under 10 milliseconds of round trip delay on a wireless network. Do read up on AWS Wavelength and on Verizon's Mac. Uh, you'll be, and if you need more information, do reach out to me. But that's where you can use the power of MEC. And I can see in Silicon Valley, you guys are really pioneering some of the work. And I have kids your age. So I'm going to talk all about your presentations to them today. And um, thank you again to ASC for this wonderful opportunity and for having me here, both Lakshmi and Piyush. Really great job organizing. I thoroughly enjoyed the presentations. And I'm, I'm happy to see where this association can go further. Uh, thanks, everyone.